Welcome to the Project Management Prepcast, helping you prepare for the PMP exam. Here's your instructor, Cornelius Fichtner. Hello and welcome back to the Project Management Prepcast, where scheduling some time with the Prepcast lessons is a great way to prepare for your PMP exam. I'm your instructor, Cornelius Fichtner. Today we end our journey through project time management by looking at the control schedule process. The primary benefit of this process is that it gives you the means to detect deviations from the plan and take necessary actions, whether they are corrective or preventive in nature, to realign the project and thereby minimizing your project's risk. So in this lesson, we'll focus on defining and discussing control schedule. Discuss managing and controlling the schedule baseline and any changes to it. We'll also be defining performance reviews and listing and elaborating on the various techniques that you can use. And we'll also discuss earned value management and how it is used to show variances and calculate performance measurements. This is a robust lesson filled with many important details, which means we had to cut it into two parts. Right now you are watching part one, which is going to be the overview and then a review of our inputs. And as you have probably already guessed, part two is going to be the tools and techniques, the outputs and our usual review at the end. We begin by looking at the framework and the important activities that make up the knowledge area of project time management. The official PMBOK guide definition for project time management is that project time management includes the processes required to manage the timely completion of your project. This is accomplished by first defining activities, then put them in order, sequence them, give an approximate duration to each of these activities, assign some resources, and once we have all of this completed, we can create a schedule, which of course, since we are now in the process of control schedule, we also have to keep an eye on and make sure that we don't deviate too much from. But a lot has to happen before we can get to controlling our schedule. First of all, in project time management, we have to plan schedule management. This is the process where we establish the policies, the procedures and documentation for all the processes that follow after it. Planning, developing, managing, executing and controlling the project schedule. So how we control our schedule at the very end with our seventh process is already planned out in our first process here. Once we have a plan on how schedule management is going to be executed in our project, we will define our activities. This is the process of identifying and documenting the specific actions to be performed to produce the project deliverables. Here we take our WBS at the lowest level. We have the work packages and we break those down into activities. Once we have these activities, we are going to put them in order. Which comes first, which second, which is third. This is the process of sequence activities, the process of identifying and documenting relationships among the project activities. At this point, we know what we're doing and in which order we're going to do it. And before we can even say how long this might take, we have to first figure out who is going to perform a particular activity. This is the process of estimate activity resources, where we estimate the type and quantities of material, human resources, equipment or supplies that are required to perform each activity. We do this first. We do this before we estimate our activity durations. Because if in the first process, estimate activity resources, we assign a junior person to an activity, then obviously the duration will take longer as if we assigned a senior 
person to that particular activity. So our four, fifth process there, estimate activity durations, is the process of estimating the number of work periods needed to complete individual activities with estimated resources. And that's the important thing, with estimated resources. The duration is very much dependent on who is actually performing the task? What is their knowledge level? What is their skill level? That very much changes your duration. Now we know what we're going to do, who's going to do it, in which order it's going to be done, and how long it's going to take. Well, it's time for us to create the schedule. We can now develop our schedule. This is the process of analyzing activity sequences, durations, resource requirements, and schedule constraints to create the project schedule model. Well, and now everything is going to be moved over into the executing portion of our project. It's moving away from here. It's going out of project time management. Project integration management is coming into play. We're going to perform the work that we said or that we set out to do in the schedule rather. And now it's our job here in project time management to control the schedule. This is the process of monitoring the status of project activities to update project progress and manage changes to the schedule baseline to achieve the plan. This is the seventh time that you see this slide here regarding into which process group our processes fall. So you know the first six fall into the planning process group and of course the process that is the focus of this lesson here, control schedule, falls into the monitoring and controlling process group. The main concept to understand in the process of controlling your schedule is that with this process, you are able to detect deviations on individual activities in your schedule. You then take actions that can be corrective or preventive in nature, and thereby you minimize the risk on your project, the risk in particular of overrunning the schedule baseline that you had originally set out. So when there are changes in activities that affect your schedule baseline, this process has the means to recognize any changes that have occurred and begin the process of correcting them. And to really understand how all of this happens, we have to remind ourselves of the PERFORM Integrated Change Control process, which is all about changes. Whether it is reviewing or approving changes or managing changes to deliverables, it is in this process of PERFORM Integrated Change Control where changes to your project are implemented. And the control schedule process is performed in conjunction with the PERFORM Integrated Change Control process. And this then means that if there are any changes that you need to implement on your schedule, you have to make a change to the schedule baseline. That means again that any changes to the schedule baseline must be approved through the PERFORM Integrated Change Control process. And of course, these changes have to be executed, they have to be implemented via the control schedule process. Well then, what are we trying to do in control schedule? Let's first look at a definition. This is the process of monitoring the status of the project to update project progress and to manage changes to the schedule baseline. If we translate this into action items that you as an actual project manager would perform, you would make schedule updates as needed. You determine the current project status, you identify and communicate all actual changes, and you are going to try and affect all aspects that are necessary for the change that needs to be implemented to keep your schedule under control. And how do you know that your schedule has changed? Well, we somewhat answered this question where we stated just a moment ago that you identify and communicate all actual changes. And I suppose the next question is then, 
how are these changes actually identified? The answer is that you compare the current schedule and the actual start and finish dates of activities against the approved schedule baseline to determine whether variances or differences have occurred. That's how you do it. This not only applies to control schedule, but also to other control processes, such as control scope, control cost, and control quality. You compare the baseline to the actuals. That is the premise of each of those. You compare the current status against what you had originally planned that it should be now, your baseline. And this ITTO overview from the PIMBOK guide here really is why we had to cut this presentation up into two parts. Six inputs, seven tools and techniques, some of them new tools and techniques that we haven't met before yet, and six relatively major outputs in order to keep control of our schedule. Let's jump into them. But let's take a different approach to introducing these inputs. Instead of going through them one by one, let's see if what we've learned so far can help us identify the inputs that we need. Are you ready? Okay. So let's see. I want to control my schedule. So I definitely need the schedule. And in the PIMBOK guide terminology, this means we need the schedule data. It contains all of our latest schedule information. Managing the schedule activities can also be a lot simpler if we know what days are available or not available for our scheduled activities. And for that, we would check our project calendars. Control schedule means showing variances of the baseline against the actuals. So we have to determine start and finish dates of schedule activities, what target dates were achieved and things like that. And what kind of information is this? It is the work performance data. You know, it shows project progress. But where exactly is the planned start and planned finished date for each activity contained in? It's contained in your project schedule. And what is all of this compared against? Of course, it is compared against our schedule baseline, which is located where? It's located in the project management plan. And finally, we must take into account the policies, procedures and schedule reporting tools that our company has. And this information is located in the organizational process assets. There you have it. You've identified all of the inputs of the control schedule process. It is no surprise that the project management plan is an input to this process since the schedule management plan is part of our project management plan and the schedule management plan sets forth the criteria for managing and controlling our schedule. The project management plan also contains the schedule baseline, which is the approved version of our planned start and finish dates for all the project activities. And without having these established baselines, there would really be nothing to make your comparisons against. And because this process is called control schedule, it's no surprise that the project schedule is one of our inputs. We know what the project schedule is. We've looked at that in detail in the develop schedule lesson. In this case here, when we refer to the project schedule, we are referring to the most current version of this document with all of the written remarks that indicate updates, activities that have been completed and activities that have started as of the date of when this schedule was printed. It is essential that we have the most recent version to ensure that we are properly managing the current schedule changes in this process. Our next input, the schedule data, is all the information that describes and controls 
the schedule. This information includes things like schedule milestones, schedule activities and activity attributes, and all the documented assumptions and constraints that have been identified. It is in our process here of control schedule that the schedule data is reviewed and updated. The organizational process assets are a not really all that surprising input to this process because organizational plans, policies and procedures, they have great influence on how the schedule is monitored and controlled. And some of the OPAs that we want to mention here are things like the existing policies, procedures and guidelines that are schedule control related. Whether they're formal or informal, a best practice, they affect how we will be executing the control schedule process. We also have schedule controlling tools and we also have methods for monitoring and reporting that are very likely documented in your organization's organizational process assets. Therefore, we want to use them, we want to know about them, and we want to make sure that we apply them correctly on our project. There are two more inputs, the work performance data and the project calendars. The work performance data were initially introduced in the lesson on project integration management. Work performance data applies to uh, project progress information. Uh, so if you're thinking of things such as which activities have started, what their progress is and which activities have already finished, then you are referring to the work performance data. And second, the project calendars, they act very much like our day-to-day -day calendars where you input the things that you're going to do. They identify available days and shifts to assign schedule activities to. And they act as an input to this process because the schedule model may need multiple project calendars to permit different work periods for some activities to be calculating the schedule schedule forecasts. And with that, we have come to the end of part one of this lesson. So it's time for us to take a quick break. Justine? I gotta hit the road. Until next time.